control refers to the regulation or management of a species defined as a pest, usually because it's perceived to be detrimental to a person's health, the ecology or the economy. Practitioners of pest control are referred to as exterminators. Let us look at the history of pest control. This practice is at least as old as agriculture as there has always been a need to keep crops free from pests. In order to maximize food production, it is advantageous to protect crops from competing species of plants as well as from herbivores competing with humans. The conventional approach was probably the first to be employed since it is comparatively easy to destroy weeds by burning them or plowing them under and to kill a larger competing herbivores such as crows and other birds eating seeds. Techniques such as crop rotation, companion planting also known as intercropping or mixed cropping and the selective breeding of pest resistant cultivators have long history. Chemical pesticides date back to around 4500 years when the Sumerians used sulphur compounds as insecticides. The Rig Veda, which is about 4000 years old, also mentions the use of poisonous plants for pest control. It was only with the industrialization and mechanization of agriculture in the 18th and 19th century and the introduction of insecticides, pyrethrum, and dairies that chemical pest control became widespread. In 20th century, the discovery of several synthetic insects such as the DDT and herbicides boosted this development. Chemical pest control is still the predominant type of pest control today, although its long-term effects led to a renewed interest in traditional and biological pest control towards the end of the 20th century. Causes Many pests have only become a problem because of the direct action of humans. Modifying these actions can often substantially reduce the pest problem. In the United States, raccoons cause a nuisance by tearing open the refuse sacks. Many householders, including bins and locking lids which deterred the raccoons from visiting. House flies tend to accumulate wherever there is human activity and is virtually a global phenomenon, especially where food or food waste is exposed. Similarly, seagulls have become pests at many seaside resorts. Tourists would often feed the birds with scraps of fish and chips. And before long, the birds would become dependent on this food source and act aggressively towards humans. Living organisms evolve and increase their resistance to biological, chemical, physical or any other form of control. Unless the target population is completely exterminated or is rendered incapable of reproduction, the surviving population will inevitably require, will acquire a tolerance of whatever pressures are brought to bear. This results in evolutionary arms race. First, let us study the biological pest control. Biological pest control is the control of one through the control and management of natural predators and parasites. For example, mosquitoes are often controlled by putting Bacillus thuringiensis species Israelis, a bacterium that infects and kills mosquito larvae in local water sources. The treatment has no known negative consequences on the remaining ecology and is safe for humans to drink. The point of biologic pest control or any natural pest control is to eliminate a pest with minimal harm to the ecological balance of the environment in its present form. Mechanical pest control Mechanical pest control is the use of hands-on technique as well as simple equipments, devices and natural ingredients that provide a protective barrier for plants and insects. For example, the weeds can be controlled by being physically removed from the ground using a tiller. This is referred to as tillage and is one of the oldest methods of weed control. Physical pest control Physical pest control is a method of getting rid of insects and small rodents by removing, attacking 
or setting up barriers that will prevent further destruction of one's plants. Proper waste management and drainage of still water eliminates the breeding grounds of many pests. Garbage provides food and shelter for many unwanted organisms as well as an area where still water might collect and be used as a breeding ground by mosquitoes. Communities that have proper garbage collection and disposal have far less of a problem with rats, cockroaches, mosquitoes, flies and other pests than those communities which don't have such proper control methods. Open air sewers are ample breeding grounds for various pests as well. By building and maintaining a proper sewer system, this problem is eliminated. Another approach is poison bait. Poison bait is a common method for controlling rat populations. However, it is not an effective method when there are other food sources around, such as garbage. Poison meats have been used for centuries for killing wolves, birds that were seen to threaten crops and against other creatures. This can be a problem since a carcass which has been poisoned will kill not only the targeted animal but also every other animal which feeds on the carcass. Humans have also been killed by coming in contact with poisoned meat or by eating an animal which had fed on a poisonous carcass. This tool is also used to manage several caterpillars, example Spodoptera litura fruit flies, snails and slugs, crabs, etc. Let us look at the approach of field burning. Traditionally, after a sugarcane harvest, the fields are all burnt, kill off any insects or eggs that might be in the fields. Example of these pests are rodents. Hunting. Historically, in some European countries, when stray dogs and cats become too numerous, local population gathered together to round up all animals that did not appear to have an owner and kill them. In some nations, teams of rat catchers work at chasing rats from the fields and killing them with dogs and simple hand tools. Some communities have in the past employed a bounty system where a town clerk will pay a set fee for every rat head brought in as a proof of rat killing. However, it is perceived unethical to kill animals in many countries. Traps With the many traps available on the market today, one can easily remove mice and rats from homes. You must first know what rodent needs to be removed, then you can decide what kind of a trap is best suited for the need. The snap trap is the most widely used. It uses a trigger, sometimes shaped like a cheese, to hold bait and kills the rodent by striking it behind the head with a wire rod or jaw. In some instances, you may wish to use glue traps also called glue boards. This type of trap requires the mouse or rat to attempt to cross the trap so that the glue can hold the rodent. After the catch is made, you can euthanize the rodent and dispose it off. Or some glue boards will release the catch when you pour vegetable oil on them as oil reacts with glue to lose its grip. The last type of trap are live catch traps. This type of trap is typically a repeating style so more than one animal can be caught at a time. They can also be released from this trap in a new location if desired. Pesticides Spraying pesticides by planes handheld units or trucks that carry the spraying equipment is a common method for pest control. Crop dusters commonly fly over farmland and spray pesticides to kill off the pests that would threaten the crop. However, some pesticides may cause cancer and other health problems as well as harm wildlife. Space Fumigation this is a project that involves a structure to be covered or sealed airtight followed by the introduction of a penetrating deadly gas at a killing concentration for a long period of time which is usually 24 to 72 hours. 
Although it's a little expensive, space fumigation targets all life stages of pests. Space treatment. A long-term project involving fogging or mystic type applicators. Liquid insecticide is dispersed in the atmosphere within a structure. Treatments do not require the evacuation of airtight ceiling of a building, allowing most work within the building to continue but at the cost of the penetrating effects. Sterilization This is another effective method of soil sterilization is soil steaming. Pest is killed through hot steam which is induced into the soil. Another approach is destruction of infected plants. Forest services sometimes destroy all the trees in an area where some are infected with insects. If seen as necessary to prevent the insect species from spreading. Farms infested with certain insects have been burned entirely to prevent the pest from spreading elsewhere. Let us look at natural rodent control measures. Several wildlife rehabilitation organizations encourage natural forms of rodent control through exclusion and predator support and preventing secondary poisoning altogether. The United States Environmental Protection Agency agrees nothing in its proposed risk mitigation disease for the nine rodents that, without habitat modification, to make areas less attractive to commensal rodents, even eradication will not prevent new populations from recolonizing the habitat. Some of the repellents used are balsam fir oil from the tree Abies balsamia is an EPA-approved non-toxic rodent repellent. Acacia polyacantha, subspecies of Camphylocantha root, emits chemical compounds that ripple animals including crocodiles, snakes and rats. This is a broad-based approach that integrates practices for economic control of pests. IPM aims to suppress pest populations below the economic injury level. The UN's Food and Agriculture Organization defines integrated pest management as the careful consideration of all available pest control techniques and subsequent integration of appropriate measures that discourage the development of pest populations and keep pesticides and other interventions to levels that are economically justified and reduce or minimize risks to human health and the environment. IPM emphasizes the growth of a healthy crop with the least possible disruption to agro-ecosystems and encourages natural pest control mechanisms. Entomologists and ecologists have urged the adoption of integrated pest management since the 1970s. Integrated pest management allows for safer pest control. This includes managing insects, plant pathogen and weeds. Globalization and increased mobility open allow increasing number of invasive species to cross national borders. Integrated pest management poses the least risks while maximizing benefits and reducing costs. The principles of IPM An American IPM system is designed around six basic components. The first component is acceptable pest level. The emphasis is on control and not eradication. Integrated pest management holds that wiping out an entire pest population is often impossible and the attempt can be expensive and unsafe. IPM programs first work to establish acceptable pest levels called action thresholds and apply controls if these thresholds are crossed. These thresholds are pest and site specific meaning that it may be acceptable at one site to have a weed such as white clover, but not at another site. Allowing a pest population to survive at a reasonable threshold reduces selection pressure. This lowers the rate at which a pest develops resistance to a control because 
If almost all pests are killed, then those that have resistance will provide the genetic basis for future population. Retaining a significant number of unresistant specimens dilutes the prevalence of any resistant genes that are pure. Similarly, the repeated use of a single class of controls will create pest populations that are more resistant to that particular class, whereas alternating among classes helps to prevent this. The second principle is preventive cultural practices. Selecting varieties best for local growing conditions and maintaining healthy crops is the first line of defense. Plant quarantine and cultural techniques such as crop sanitation are next. Example, removal of a diseased plant and cleaning pruning shears to prevent spread of infections. Bacterial fungi and bacteria are added to the potting media of horticulture crops vulnerable to root diseases generally reducing the need for fungicides. The third principle is monitoring. Regular observation is critically important. Observation is broken into inspection and identification. Visual inspection, insect and spore traps and other methods are used to monitor pest levels. Record keeping is essential as it is a thorough knowledge target pest behavior and reproductive cycles. Since insects are cold-blooded, their physical development is dependent on area temperature. Many insects have had their development cycles modeled in terms of degree days. The degree days of an environment determines the optimal time for a specific insect outbreak. Plant pathogens follow similar patterns of response to weather and season. The fourth principle is mechanical controls. Should a pest reach an unexpected level, mechanical methods are the first options. They include simple hand picking, barriers, traps, vacuuming and tillage to disrupt breeding. The fifth principle is the biological controls. Natural biological processes and materials can provide control with acceptable environmental impact and often at lower cost. The main approach is to promote beneficial insects that eat or parasitize target pests. Biologic insecticides derived from naturally occurring microorganisms also fall in this category. Further, biology-based or ecological techniques are under evaluation. The next principle is called as responsible use. Synthetic pesticides are used as required and often only at specific times in a pest's life cycle. Many newer pesticides are derived from plants or naturally occurring substances. But the toxophore or active component may be altered to provide increased biological activity or stability. Application of pesticides must reach their intended targets. Matching the application technique to the crop the pest and the pesticide is critical. The use of low volume spray equipment reduces overall pesticide use and labor cost. An integrated pest management regime can be simple or sophisticated. Historically, the main focus of IPM programmers was on agricultural insect pest. Although originally developed for agricultural pest management, IPM programs are now developed to encompass diseases, weeds and other pests that interfere with management objectives for sites such as residential and commercial structures, lawn and turf areas and home and community gardens. IPM is the selection and use of pest control actions that will ensure favorable economic, ecological and social consequences and is applicable to most agricultural, public health and amenity pest management situations. Reliance on knowledge, experience, observation and integration of multiple techniques makes integrated pest management appropriate for organic farming. For conventional farms, IPM can reduce human and environmental exposure to hazardous chemicals and potentially lower overall costs. 
a mistaken identification of a pest may result in an ineffective action. For example, plant damage due to overwatering could be mistaken for a fungal infection since many fungal and viral infections arise under moist conditions. Monitoring begins immediately. Before the pest's activity becomes significant, monitoring of agricultural pests including tracking soil, planting media fertility and water quality. Overall plant health and resistance to pests is greatly influenced by the pH, alkalinity of dissolved mineral and oxygen reduction potential. Many diseases are waterborne, spread directly by irrigation water and indirectly by splashing. Once the pest is known, knowledge of its life cycle provides the optimal intervention points. For example, weeds reproducing from last year's seed can be prevented with mulches and pre-emergent herbicide. Pest tolerant crops such as soya beans may not warrant interventions unless the pests are numerous or rapidly increasing. Intervention is warranted if the expected cost of damage by the pest is more than the cost of control. Health hazards may require intervention that is not warranted by economic consideration. Specific sites may also have varying requirements. Example, white clover may be acceptable on the sides of a tea box on a golf course but is unexpected in a fair way where it could confuse the field of play. Possible interventions include mechanical, physical, cultural, biological and chemical. Mechanical and physical controls include picking pests of plants or using netting or other material to exclude pests such as birds from grapes or rodents from structures. Cultural controls include keeping an area free of conductive conditions by removing waste or diseased plants, flooding, sanding and the use of disease resistant crop varieties. Biological controls are numerous. They include conservation of natural predators or augmentation of natural predators, sterile insect technique. Let us study what is augmentation, inoculative release and inundative release. These are the different methods of biological control that affect the target pest in different ways. Augmentative control includes the periodic introduction of predators. With inundative release, the predators are collected, mass reared and periodically released in large numbers into the pest area. This is used for an immediate reduction in host populations, generally for annual crops, but is not suitable for long run use. With inoculative release, a limited number of beneficial organisms are introduced at the start of the growing season. This strategy offers long time control as the organism's progency affect the pest populations throughout the season and is common in orchids. With seasonal inoculative release, the beneficials are collected, mass reared and released seasonally to maintain the beneficial population. This is commonly used in greenhouses. In America and other western countries, inundative releases are predominant, while in Asia and Eastern Europe, more commonly used is the inoculation and occasional introductions. Let us study what is called as the sterile insect technique. This is an area-wide integrated pest management program that introduces a sterile male pest into the pest population to trick females into unsuccessful breeding encounters, thus providing a form of birth control and reducing reproduction rates. The biologic controls mentioned above are only appropriate in extreme cases because in the introduction of new species or supplementation of naturally occurring species can have detrimental ecosystem effects. Biological controls can be used to stop invasive species or pests, but they can become an introduction path for new pests. Chemical controls include horticultural oils or application of insecticides and herbicides. A green pest management IPM program uses pesticides derived from plants such as botanicals or other naturally occurring materials. Thus, to conclude with, pesticides can be classified by their mode of action, 
rotating among materials with different modes of action minimizes pest resistance. Hence, evaluation is the process of assessing whether the intervention was effective, whether it was produced unacceptable, whether it produced unacceptable side effects, whether to continue.